His perfect love Have you heard of the one in heaven? Have you heard how he gave his son? Cause I have found this love I believe in the sun Show me Today the same Forever till forever 
Church, welcome to Sunday worship. Hey, did you know that some things in life are true and some aren't? Like this flower. Do you think this flower is real or fake? Look closely. Come on. Yes, this flower is real. Hmm. I want to test you guys to see how much you know what's true. Let's play a round of True or false? Question number one. The human body consists of 140 bones. Is it true or false? Ready? It is false. Human body contains 206 bones. Now question number two. Camels have three sets of eyelids. So strange. Do you think it's true or false? It is true. Camels do have three sets of eyelids. They are transparent lid. It helps keep out sand and dust. It can even improve vision, like contact lenses. Many animals include dogs, cats, um, sharks, and some birds and amphibians, they also have third eyelids. Pretty cool. Question number three. There are 100 books in the Bible. True or false? 
false. They are 66 six book in the Bible. Now last but not least, question number four. Pastorina's favorite food is sushi. Do you think it's false or true? It is false. Sushi is my second favorite food, but my all-time favorite food, my number one is fall. Church, like I mentioned before, there are some things in life that are true and some that aren't. In today's Bible story, we are going to learn that there is only one true God who deserves our worship. Let's check it out. The Bible tells stories about prophets. A prophet is someone who shares God's message with his people. They remind people to follow and obey God. One of the most famous prophets was a man named Elijah. Elijah was courageous and bold. There was an evil king named Ahab who wanted people to worship an idol named Baal instead of God. Elijah knew this was wrong, so he invited the king and everyone who worshipped Baal to the top of Mount Carmel. Elijah said, How long are you going to worship this false idol and ignore God? No one answered him. So Elijah set up a challenge, a contest, to see who could actually answer prayers, Baal or God. They built two altars, one for Baal and one for God. Elijah set some ground rules. We'll put wood and a bull on the altars and pray for a fire to start. Now, there are only 450 of you and only one of me. Well, we'll see who actually gets a response. So the men who followed Baal prayed for flames. They yelled at the sky all morning. They jumped, they danced, but by noon no fire had started. I guess Baal must be sleeping. Or maybe he's just in the bathroom. This made them yell louder and louder until sunset. But still, no fire appeared on the altar. When it was clear that their prayers were unheard and unanswered by Baal, Elijah said, Come closer. Watch this. Elijah surrounded the altar he built for God with 12 stones. He dug a trench around it. Then he did something truly courageous. Because he believed in God's promise to answer prayer, Elijah poured water all over the altar, four full jugs of water. Then he did it again, and again, and again, until the wood was soaked and the trench was filled with water. Then Elijah prayed. He asked God to show everyone his power, and God did. God's fire fell. It not only burnt up all the wet wood and bull, but also the stones and the dust and dried up all the water in the trench. God made fire destroy everything to answer Elijah's bold prayer. When all the people saw this, they immediately worshiped God. Elijah had the courage to pray big prayers because he knew God would keep his promises. God wants us to pray like that because we can count on him too. Ahab was the king of Israel, and he was an evil king. Why was he an evil king, you ask? Well, instead of encouraging Israelites' people to worship God, he led them away from God. He wanted the Israelites to worship the false god named Baal. Do you think Baal could see or hear those who pray to him? No, of course not. Why? Because it's not real. Instead of worshiping the one and only true God, King Ahab led the Israelites to worship the false, fake God. And this made God angry, so God caused a great drought. The drought would show King Ahab and all the people that our God is all-powerful. Do you think Baal can cause drought? Do you think it can do anything? Not at all. Only our God Almighty can. The drought lasted for three years. No rain fell in the, rain, in the land, and that made life very hard for everyone. People didn't have enough water to drink. And of course, 
they couldn't grow any crops. Yikes. After three years, God was ready to send rain to his sent prophet named Elijah to give a message to King Ahab. Elijah told King Ahab and said, You have caused this trouble by disobeying God and worshiping the false idol. Then Elijah invited King Ahab, the prophet of Baal, and the Israelites people to Mount Carmel. Then he said, Now make up your mind. If you believe the Lord is God, follow him. If you think the bell is real, then follow him. People did not say anything, so Elijah decided to show people who the true living God is. He told prophets of Baal to set up an altar for, for their false fake God. So they did. The prophets of Baal uh, built an altar and put a bull on top of it. Elijah told the prophets to ask their fake God, Baal, to send fire to their altar. What do you think happened? The prophets of Baal, they cried out from morning till noon. That's a long time. They even danced and cried and cut their bodies. Yikes! But still, nothing happened. Nothing. I mean, of course, right? If it was Elijah's turn, Elijah dug a trench around his altar, prepared a bowl, and put it on a pile of wood. Not only that, Elijah poured four jugs full of water on the altar. After people pour all four jugs, Elijah ordered to pour more water onto the altar. So the altar, the bull, the wood, and everything was all wet. In fact, the water went down the altar and filled the trench. That's a lot of water. After that, Elijah prayed to God. Let's read 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 36 to 38. At the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. And serve me, Lord, answer me, so these people will know that you, Lord, are God, and that you are turning their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stone, and the soil, and also it licked up the water in the trench. Now, kabam! King Ahab, prophets of Baal, and the people of Israel, they all saw God's almighty power. He is our one and only true living God. The men who had worshipped Baal, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Their dark clouds came and God sent a great rain. God ended the drought and proved that He is the one and only true living God. Church people may try to tell you that God isn't real. Now, is that true? Of course not. Our Father in heaven, our God, is real. He is the one and only true living God. Only our God can hear our prayer. Our God, He cares for us and He loves us. He loves us enough to send His Son, uh, Jesus, to save us. I want, I want to challenge all of you to remember that our God is real and that He is our King. This messy and crazy world will try to convince people to try to think that there are other gods or that we do not need our God. But I want all of you guys, I want all of you, church, to stand firm on God's words and know that there is one true God who alone deserves our worship. Amen? Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for being an awesome and powerful God. 
Help us to remember that you are our one and only true living God. Father, you deserve our worship. We pray all this in your name. Amen. Well, that's it for today, church, and I'll see you guys next time. But before I let you guys go, we are going to say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And I'll see you guys next time.